Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is currently Thursday and what a better way to celebrate Thursday than on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2013. Welcome to Day 9 Daily, number 554, where we're going to keep you company today. The day where you might be alone at home in the evening. It might be something you do every Thursday. And yet today you're saying, I have a reason to feel sad. No, you don't. You do whatever you want to do today. If you're someone like me, you might think to yourself, good old games.com has all the Heroes of Might and Magic games. I grew up playing two. Maybe it's time to move on to three. <gasps> Maybe so. Maybe you're one of those wonderful individuals who has a significant other that you have decided to swoon. What are you doing here? Maybe it's a date. Actually, I have an idea. Perhaps you're tuning into the Day 9 Daily, your arm around your girlfriend, and you're thinking, I'm the best boyfriend ever. I'm bringing her to the Daily, and she's watching, and no doubt, she's aroused. Way to go, gentlemen. Mmm, nothing teases like a Zerg versus Zerg rapid-fire analysis, which is what we're going to be doing today, interspersed with anecdotes of love and touching. Potato, potato. And I'm so thrilled to be able to cast today and to say phrases like potato, potato, because when you try to type out potato, potato, you just look like someone who typed potato twice. Mmm. Trying to think. Mmm. Mmm. Before we begin the daily, I'm trying to think of the first time I ever had a crush on a girl. It was way back in third grade. She had short blonde hair. I don't even know if it makes sense to describe any other dimensions of her. She wasn't tall or short. She was, I mean, she was a third grader. She had short blonde hair. And I remember absolutely nothing else about her except that her name was Felicity. And Felicity had no discernible characteristics about her that made her appealing because crushes didn't work that way. You didn't have a crush on someone because you had something in common or because you were friends or because they were nice or because they were funny. You just kind of had a crush. It's like if you're going to work one day and there's traffic, you're just like, well, I guess I'm in traffic now. That's how crushes worked when you were young. So, of course, the primary use of this crush in third grade was for my brother to get things out of me. We used to play SimCity 2000, and I'd be playing, he's like, dude, I want to play. I'm like, I've been playing for ten minutes! And he would be like, well, if you don't get off now, I'm going to tell Felicity. And I'd be like, no, it's so unfair! And I would scream and cry, and I would tell my grandma, hey, Grandma doesn't want to go! And then she'd, like, set a timer for an hour. And be like, it's Sean's turn to play Nick. And Nick would be like, I'm telling you right now. It didn't even occur to me that he didn't have her phone number. But still, I was devastated. Mean old Nick. And of course, now that I'm 26 and Nick is 28, I want to tell her that I'm in love with a girl named Felicity. He's like, dude, you better let me play SimCity 2000 or else I'm going to cannon rush her. And I'm like, Nick, no, that's so horrible and cruel. You're such a monster. Some things never change. Nick will cannon rush till the day he dies. <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. Now, uh, do we want to watch TLO versus Idra? Versus X-Lord or versus Gosu user? Do a little scritchy scratching in. We're gonna do a little Zerg versus Zerg analysis, then we're gonna pop on back to doing the regular gameplay. Great. In these rapid fire game analyses, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to, oh, we're gonna click on the wrong game. Oh, but, oh my god. Oh no. All right, I'm gonna close it. Oh no, here it goes. Please don't crash. Please, please don't crash. And I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we made it out of the crashing zone. Now I'm losing. Loading. 
against Evil Geniuses Idra. Liquid TLO versus EG Idra. I'm gonna pop right on into this. Whoa! Into this incorrect. Oh! Ah! My overlays! Get up there! Oh, oh, thank God. It's a good thing I looked and prepared earlier. Woo! Oh, oh my God. That was close. All right. Screw this. I want to tell another story, okay? I'm, again, we're going to be doing some rapid-fire analyses where we blast through uh, multiple games, and we don't stop. We just sort of shoot all the way through them. But I wanted to ask if any of you have ever prepared an exquisite, exceptional gift for a girl, or if you're a girl for a boy, for Valentine's Day, handed it to them confidently, and then got owned. Has this happened to you? Type a 1 if this has happened to you, and a 0 if this has never happened to you. I want to get a sense of this. I, genu I genuinely want to get the sense... All right, has this ever happened? Okay. Okay, let me actually let me actually show this. Many of you. Look at all those ones. Ones are the poor tragic Oh my god, my brothers and sisters. How my heart bleeds for you the tragedies that have unfolded at times like those. I think I may have told you this. Uh perhaps not, but uh once upon a time there was a girl I fancied. It was a girl I fancied quite a bit. And I got her custom made jewelry. I went with a jeweler and I sat down and I was like, all right, put in those links and put in these gemstones and use that color silver because I know she'll like it. Ooh, it was so good. Did I, did I say this on Monday? Did I talk a little bit about this on Monday? For some reason, I feel like I may have. I just want to get a double check on this, because if I, if I didn't... No, no, okay, great. Alright. So I, I got a custom-made piece of jewelry. And I, 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 I burned a CD that had one song on it that was an unbelievably romantic cute song prettiest friend by um by jason mraz an acoustic version oh and i put it in this like custom made box you know those like chinese lamps that like um that that are that have like the thin paper in there the the um, i don't know what it's but it's like the, the light box with with the pretty design i cut it up and i made it into like a little box where i had like the jewelry on this side and i had like the little uh, the cd on that side and then I sent it to her. Not not me, not just like, here you go. But like I, 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 I sent it so that way she would receive it without anyone else around because I think that's totally fucking romantic. That she would just be like at work and be like, what is this? Oh my God. And she'd like try to open it up and people would be peering and be like, what is that? She's like, shut up. You know, and do that. And, and then she'd find it. And then, later, she would get a hold of me, and she'd be like, Oh my god, Sean. Oh my god. I just... <gasps> and this happened at the office, and they were looking at me, and I'm like, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I all expected this. This was all part of the plan. And then... And then... N no, nothing at, like, 6 p.m. when she's off work. Nothing at 6.30, nothing at 7, and then I did my daily... And then nothing at, nothing after that, and at 8.30 and 9. And then finally, I just like call her and I was like, hi. And she's like, hey, how are you? And I'm like, I'm fine. Did you get my gift? And she was like, yeah, thanks so much. It was really sweet, but I had a really shitty day at work. And then she went on about her day at work and I was like, what? And I was like, I'm glad it was a terrible day. And I hung up and I was like, Argh! I was like, ah! I was like so angry. Oh, I was like, oh no. Oh, what really happened? I was like, oh no, a bad day. Tell me about it. And in my head, there was this moment where, where, where like, when I was younger, when I was younger, I used to just like, I used to like, you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry. Oh, but nowadays, like, like, 
it's like a switch that just all of a sudden, you know, it, it's like one of those hidden doors in uh, The Price is Right, where, you know, like when they turn it around and it's either like a U1 or like a nope, like that's what happens in my head. I just feel like I picked a door and then it was like, nope. Like in my head, I'm just like, nope, done, done, and enjoy the CD. <laughs> God, there's like... There was like 71 minutes wasted on that album. I can't believe it. 71 minutes. Mm. Mm. But still, still, is that not baller? I do that. I've done tons of things like that. Elaborate little things. Mm. Yeah. I'm proud. I'm proud that I'm someone who does that. I'm thrilled. Because you know what? That's fine. She got the award. Nope. That's what she got. I got to tell a story on air. Mmm. Nope. Nope. All right, let's do a rapid fire analysis, and then we come back in part two. Let's tell some more stories. In the bottom right corner, we have Tiro. And in the top left hand corner, we have Egadrark, A K E G Idra R C. And this is where they do a little bit of dat buildup. Um. Uh, they do a build up and then they save and they resume. I actually watched them do the resume a couple of times on this. Um, uh, I was hoping to do double sided analysis a little bit on this. But that's fine. Um, we'll just do the single sided analysis. Egadrark having that internet issues, but TLO does the usual hatchery first expand. Immediately, one of the big things that we are concerned about is if they go for an ultra-fast one-base um, Ling Bane Ling thing, kind of like what DRG did versus Life in the Iron Squid Finals. And all we have to do is have Micro as good as Life's. So this is a um, this is a move that is neither it's not just precautionary or um, aggressive. This is just like. Necess I don't want to say necessary, but it's really, really, really flexible, and I really like it a lot. We get the Zergling speed up, which helps us defend against a lot of early uh, pressures, particularly Roach pressure. Even though Roach pressure is not something that people see a lot anymore because it has such a low win percentage rate, this is absolutely critical for being able to hold off a lot of these attacks that TLO is doing. But I think most importantly... If he's not attacking us, then we can just get the speed and attack him back. If he is attacking us, then we can deal with Zerglings running up in the main. It's a, just an excellent tool. I don't want to say that it is necessary because there are other ways to play. But it's just still important that we know why all the pieces of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the meantime, Idra doing a smart plan. This is a, an interesting move that a lot of Zergs are, are not doing. But all the big money Zergs is getting one of these scouts in, sees no drones going for gas. Now look at this. Notice that TLO did not check for the geyser. He did not check for the geyser. He checked for drones en route to and from the geyser, which is which is fine. I mean, Idra has not yet researched Zergling speed, but he will. Just waited for it to get out of range. So, um... This is, I think, one of the most key times to, as an example, use the what someone can be doing versus what someone can't be doing. He still could be going for Zergling Speed. He still could be going for Banelings. It's so easy to, to see no ripple and to be like, well, he's not going Link Speed or he didn't do this build. All we're just, We have to cross off what he can't be doing. And given that we saw gas and saw an early expand, there's... Almost nothing that we can cross off. Almost nothing at all. So this was just to kind of get a sense of, oh, he's doing this loose structure build. I guess he's, you know, we can obviously cross off things like early four queen builds uh, with no gas. But really not much else. We can't say if he's going aggressive. We can't say if he's going defensive. We need some other tool. So, uh, uh, both players, but because I'm emphasizing TLO today, both players go for the Baneling Nest. Excellent. Excellento. Make a memento. Oh, yes. So, in the meantime, another precautionary measure from TLO. Going for the Spine Crawler quite swiftly. Um, getting drones. Continuing to drone up. Not really adding on many Zerglings. I actually, I'm going to go to the TLO cam. And I'm actually going to turn off this annoying color change thingy. 
We see Idra going for a lair. I don't really want to talk too much about that right now. I still want to stay uh, relatively focused on what we're seeing in camp TLO. Getting a lot of geysers quite early on. Zergling gets in. Not a lot on the Zergling front. Just kind of non-stop droning. This is this... Um, Right around seven minutes, there's a couple of timings that we get to ask ourselves about. This is kind of why I like this scout timing. Is he going for a third? A lot of roaching, fast thirding players would have done that. Is he going for a big attack? Okay, that's what these guys are going for. We're still getting the information. And this is the most valuable information that we can receive. The sight of those geysers. He's definitely going for something tech-focused. He's definitely going for something layery. Uh, I would say that the typical timing for a lot, 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 lot of fast spiring players is six minutes is when they start the layer. And as a result, kind of around nine minutes. Nine to nine thirty is when mutalists will really be able to pop out. TLO is doing a more standard defensive play, which is to get a later layer, later collections of gas. And I really wish that there was some sort of total gas mind type of thing <laughs> uh, because this is this structure is very nice for being able to go for things like the um, really fast roach with infester with You don't have any sound, do you? You have sound now, don't you? How does it sound, ladies and gentlemen? I figure I may as well bite my finger sesually since you can hear me. Uh. Part of the swarm, for some reason, rips the sound away from my computer. Lieth, I have no idea. Good thing I'm here. Let's come back to this key moment right here. I want to talk about this in real time in terms of the consideration of things. Right now, TLO, what is our opponent doing? We don't see any attempt to take a third. Likely not going to be doing some sort of roach-ish defense. We definitely would have seen our creep spread down here if we wanted to see some sort of roachingness to take this or roachingness to take this. Very likely our opponent is going for a very, very low queen count high inject number fast tech to the layer. That really looks like what's going on. And then when we see this and we see this kind of expand at eight minutes, we still haven't seen a push. We're still seeing nothing. We're still seeing nothing. So therefore, he's probably going for some sort of layer tech. TLO therefore opts to do this weird, funky, kind of fast, double upgrady thing. So, if we are electing to do this, we have identified that he is either going Mutalisk or he is going Infester. Uh, Zerglings answer all of that. Um, not in an extremely easy-peasy way, but in a uh, kind of roundabout, difficult way. We just continue to throw Zerglings at him, which forces his Mutalist to stay back and be defensive, giving us time to get this up. And um, against Infestors, a lot of Zerglings are good against someone who has Infestors. We can just run a few of them up and do some Micronus. And um, as an int another interesting choice... We're seeing TLO get up this Spire and upgrade the Zerglings. You're noticing how Zergling heavy all of this is. 
And of course, the burrow, the last very TLO-esque thing, kind of forces even more defense. It's very easy to ask yourselves, why on earth was TLO n not getting his layer up early? It's so important to get the lead in the layer, so that way we get the lead in the mutalisks. No big deal, says TLO. I had the lead in the minerals, and therefore minerals are what I'm going to use to get ahead. A lot of counterattacking, just gentle leading with single pairs, or single zerglings, or pairs of zerglings. Even though... TLO Spire is later, using his minerals, using his Zergling Edge, he's able to chip away, and in fact, TLO, who got a later third, has earlier control of the gases. So, a, a sort of way to think about that is either I'm rushing for Mutalisks, and I'm rushing for the Gas Edge on two bases, or... I'm behind, and I'm saying, aha, then I will get the gas edge on a third base. Boom, that's exactly what's going on. And with these 1-1 one, one upgrades, it's another way of saying, I have the lead in minerals, I will have better mineral pound for poundage than you. And we can actually probably see a lot of that up in this, um, this tab, this income tab, previously, earlier on. At this point, not so much, because TL has already established this sort of control. So, of course, that's why we're seeing, once the third base is up, the TLO is emphasizing getting up Dem Mutars. Because he is claiming, I have gotten enough of a lead with this mineral pressuring that I'm going to be pulling back. That's the argument, in theory, of it. I much so prefer this Zergling kind of play if we start it a little earlier. I think that as a response, it's a touch weak. I think that it did not quite deal as much damage as we would have hoped. And I'm kind of intentionally hiding the uh, Mutar tab. The Mutalisk counting station, if you will. Uh, are there Mutalisks popping in? I mean, this should be pretty straightforward. It all kind of revolves around this base. And if I had to point, if for some reason TLO is unable to win this, I really very strongly feel that it kind of came down to this choice to get these double Evo Chambers up so late. And then we have a Mutalist engagement who will come out ahead. We just open up this tab and see that Idra did in fact have the lead. So this is kind of a simple game, um, but it still kind of has a nice little concept in it. Just right around this period, this I think is great. All this sort of harassment, I think, is great because, again, we're trying to get the lead in gas here. And we can evaluate the success of that play by kind of stepping into this 11-minute mark and then saying, okay, I have mined. Looks like 100 gas here and 100 gas here. Whereas Idra has basically mined no gas. So cool, we have a 200 gas lead on this extractor. But Idra, we see, has mined about 500 Five or 550, 550, 450, and a lot. <laughs> we have mined about the same out of this one, but then we've mined 500, 500, 500. Yeah, in fact, TLO should theoretically have just an ever so slight lead in the gas front. So we can evaluate this as, oh yeah, it was a win in terms of gas, but... In terms of every other direction, I mean, Idra was just, or uh, TLO's way behind in the drone count. And sort of hilariously, I'm actually curious at this final battle, was was TLO able to have spent all his gas? Coming back here, wow, that's like a, that's like a friggin' mystery to me. Yeah. This is like such a typical problem. Look at that. <laughs> 824 gas. TLO has three less Mutalisks on the field and eight more Mutalisks <laughs> in the bank. Kind of, a, kind of a funny result. So, I think that that is an amazing demonstration of a concept that worked the way it was supposed to, but we overdid it. We spent a lot of minerals blasting him down to get a lead in gas, and we very clearly had this lead in gas, but we spent too many minerals. <laughs> so the way that I would repair that is actually to try to um, make a better identification to get this double gas go or this double extractor business going earlier 
to be able to apply more pressure uh, more efficiently with our minerals. Let's go on to a break for part two, and we come back, we'll do more rapid fire analysis. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, yes! Uh-huh! 